Good night. You ready? Yeah. Ready to start? Yeah. Welcome to Off the Cuff, brothers and sisters. <laughs> hey, brothers and sisters, we're going to take up from, welcome again, we're going to take up from last week and we're going to um, just have a look at how vital the body is uh, in the world at the moment and uh, how much scripture, how much Yahuwah mentions the body, not only the body but the body parts, realising that um, the body is represented as female because mm. um, he wants a wife and he wants a family. He wants that body to reproduce. The word is the seed. So it's useless of me talking to you tonight um, from my knowledge because you wouldn't believe me. So I'm going to put scripture there. But what I'm going to go through with the scripture, I want you to know that you can look up in, in your concordance or whatever. I've just picked out a few scriptures and we're, we're only going to get through the head. That's all we get through, the features on the head. That's all we're going to get through tonight. There's much more. But you could do this same study 50 times over and come out with different instructions. So as things are mentioned like a nose or an eye or a nostril or whatever, you're going to understand that he's speaking to us about the parts of the body. It's always talking about the parts of the body, what he wants from the body, what he expects from the body. A lot of people don't realise this, and I'm sure you haven't, but as we just go through this study, you'll see how important the body is to him and what he wants it to do. We need for the rest of the Nazarim around the world to realise the behaviour that Yahuwah and Yahushua expect of us. And this is something that people just um and ah about. Poo poo, hoo ha, hoo ha. Well, this isn't what he wants. So I'm just going to bring forth some scriptures. Now remember, this isn't the study of the body. You can do a, a stack of, look up a stack of words like I've done here. I've just pulled out a few for us to talk about. Now, we need this foundation. We need a foundation of the word, a foundation of behaviour. We need agreement and we need to come into unity. So let's hope that we're going to bring some of that tonight. So the first one is the head. Now, look out for the scripture that mentions the head. Now, this is just, I just... Read around where, where the scripture says a, a head or a tongue or a nose. I just read around, pick out a scripture and just read around it. So we're going to get an understanding that whatever we look up as far as the body is concerned, we're going to get teaching. And this is the teaching that we need. This is the real stuff. And as I said before, if you can't concentrate, go away. Don't watch this. You need to get it together to be able to sit there, get yourself together and not be angry. Okay. Matthew 5, 32 to 48. But I say to you that whoever puts away his wife, except for the matter of whoring, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who has been put away commits adultery. Did you know that? you marry someone that's been put away, you're committing adultery. Again, you heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to Yahuwah. This is the oaths. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither, neither by heaven, because it is Elohim's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great sovereign. Here we go. Here's the scripture. Nor swear by your head, his head, because you are not able to make one hair white or black. 
So you're not allowed to swear by your head. This is just the head. We're looking at the body. This is just our scripture. And it's always there. And you're always going to get teaching. But let your word, yea, be yea, and your no be no. And what goes beyond there is from the wicked one. You heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the wicked. But whosoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek to him also. Are you doing that, brothers and sisters? And he who wishes to sue you and take away <clears throat> your inner garment, let him have your outer garment as well. You've got to go there. This is the Torah. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. That's what you have to do. That's how we have to walk. Give to him who asks of you and from him who wishes to borrow from you, do not turn away. If you've got it and they come to you, you've got to go there. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour you going to sleep? No. Ark? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> and hate your enemy. <laughs> you look like you're asleep to me. Really? Yeah. Oh, there's a delay. Ah. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you. We have to become like this. This is our instruction. And we just looked up the scripture on head and we're reading around it and you're always going to find teaching. There's so many scriptures that mention head. Why I was led to this one, I'm just doing it. So that you become sons of your father in the heavens because he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So he's going to give everything to both. For if you love those loving you, what reward have you? Now I want to say, brothers and sisters, are you going out loving people that don't like you? Are you going into that area? Well, that's where you have to go. You have to put up with them and love them in spite of what they dish out to you. Are the ta tax collectors not doing the same? Yeah. And if you greet your brothers, only what do you do more than others? If you greet your brothers only, what do you do more than others? Are the tax collectors not doing so too? They were really horrible people in this time. Therefore, be perfect because your Father in heaven is perfect. So it means mature. So we can become mature. You know, we don't want to hang around at the... Uh, the, the door stuff, we're just learning about the door, talking about the door, coming in, just talking about those things all the time. We want to go further on and take this scripture as a reality and live it. A lot of people don't live this. This is what we need to do. This is from the head. Who is the head? Here's some teaching about the head. Isn't it miraculous how it all comes in and gels together? And this is only one scripture on the head. There's a stack of them and there's teaching in there. And if you want to really get the teaching, you'll get into the word and you'll understand what he's saying to you. Okay. Now the next one we're going to look at is the forehead, the forehead. So that's Revelation 14, 9 to 10. So the, the main thing for the last one, for the head, is don't swear by the head. Don't swear by any oath. Do the Torah. Do what the Torah is telling us. The forehead, Revelation 14, 9 to 10. And so I said it's no good just talking to you. From my knowledge, it's better to bring Torah into it. Revelation 14, 9 to 10. You right? Yes, sir. And the third messenger followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image 
and receives his mark upon his forehead. forehead or upon his hand. So see, here we've got teaching about the forehead. There's a lot of things about the forehead. This is just one of them. So if any worship, anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on his own forehead or upon his hand, that's the mark of the beast, he also shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out un undiluted into the cup of his wrath, and he shall be tortured with fire and sulphur before the set-apart messengers and before the Lamb. Now that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Mm. If you receive the mark. Well, what's the mark? The, the mark of the Nazarim is the Sabbath. They do the Sabbath. That's the sign and the seal and the mark of Yahuwah in their life, on them, they do the Sabbath. And the mark of Satan is anyone worshipping on the day of the sun, Sunday. They go and worship, that's the mark of the beast. Now you have to research this, you have to find this out yourself. Don't believe me, go and research. There's plenty of places you can research this. So if you receive, if you you've got the mark of Satan on you because you go to church on Sunday, you worship on Sunday, well then you're going to be in trouble, aren't you? See what it says. What's going to happen? Yeah. You're going to. He also shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, and that's why the scripture says, "Come out of her, my people." Christianity is the whore, and we have to understand this but not judge the Christians, but understand what the scripture is saying. Everything's been twisted around and we're getting untwisted by coming into this place. But don't believe me, you have to research that. Okay, the next one is the eyebrows, number three. So we've gone ahead, the forehead, and now we're looking at the eyebrows. And that's Leviticus 4, 1 to 20. How do you say that why are thing, Mark? Why ikra. Why ikra. Yeah. Why ikra. This is amazing, this flow you've got. Yeah? Being back and forward, wow, it's fantastic. Well, it's all through Scripture, Mark. Yeah. The whole thing is that it's not just in the New Testament about the body. Because mm. they all, that this is what we've been taught, taught that. The circus fathers are saying that, you know, there's no Israel anymore. The C-H-U-R-C-H, the circus, has taken its place. Hmm. But all through it talks about the body, and that's what I want to bring out, you know. Wow. So the eyebrows are... What chapter? Leviticus 14, 1 to 20. I haven't even told there's so many scriptures that you can look at, you know, mm. and get teaching. Okay, 14. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, is that it? Yeah. yeah. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, this shall be the Torah of the leper, I am, for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look and see if the leprosy is healed in the leper. So we're looking for the word eyebrows. We're looking for the word eyebrows. Remember, I've looked up the scripture, and I'm not saying which one it is, so we're going to concentrate on where eyebrows are going to come in in this teaching. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall command, and he shall take for him who is to be cleansed, to live uh, two live and clean birds and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. So that's going to 20. And the priest shall command and he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. A lot of instruction here, what you have to do to get rid of the leprosy. Let him take the live bird and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and dip them 
and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the live bird loose in, in, a, in the open field. And he who is to be cleansed shall wash his garments and shall shave off all his hair and wash himself in water and shall be clean. Then after that he comes into the camp but shall stay outside his tent seven days. This is what they had to go through to be cleansed of leprosy. And on the seventh day it shall be that he shaves all the hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows. Here's the part of the body about the eyebrows. Every part of the body is mentioned right throughout Scripture in numerous ways so we understand how important the body is. Even all his hair he shaves off. And he shall wash his garments and wash his body in water and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he takes two male lambs, perfect ones, and one new lamb, a year old, a perfect one, and three-tenths of an ether of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering and one log of oil. And the priest who is cleansing shall present the man who is to be cleansed with these offerings before Yahuwah at the door of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall take one male lamb and bring it as a guilt offering and uh, the log of oil and wave them as a wave offering before Yahuwah. And he shall slaughter the lamb in the place where he slaughters the sin offering. Aha, uh -huh, that's interesting. And the burnt offering in a set-apart place. For the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest. It is most set apart. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and the priest shall put it in the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed. So he's getting blood put on his, which ear? Right ear. Who is to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. How bizarre is all this? And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahuwah. And the rest of the oil in his hand, the priest puts some of the tip of the right ear, some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed. So he's getting ear oil on his ear as well as the blood. And on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt offering. Now this is bizarre, isn't it? Mm. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he puts on the, on the head of him who is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah. And the priest shall make the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterwards he slaughters the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar and the priest shall make the atonement for him and he shall be clean. Clean. Mm. Leprosy is sin today. We look at it in the light. Sin is leprosy. It destroys our life. It destroys the body. That's what leprosy does. That's what sin does. And aren't we so blessed to have the Messiah who's already paid the atonement and washed us in his blood and made us clean? The leprosy of our sin is gone. We have power over sin. Now, a lot of you probably don't realise that you have that and you haven't been putting it to practice. So therefore, you're not getting the benefits. You're getting ripped off. Maybe you're into other silly little things and you're not studying to walk up the path and get the necessary things to give you life. He wants us to grow up into the head to come into his mindset, to flow with him, to hear him, to understand him, 
and work for him in these last days. And from what we see in the messianic realm now, it's pitiful. And the messianic realm needs to wake up and realise that it's not like a circus. We're not trying to form the best messianic movement. The body is all over the world and we need to know that. We need to all have this behaviour. He's telling us we all need to have this knowledge. How wonderful is the knowledge. The library of his mind is opened to those who will pursue it. And you have to pursue it through his word. Mm. Otherwise, you have no access to the library. His name, the name Yahuwah, and how much carry-on and crap is there about the name? Mm. Hey? <laughs> they won't get it together and just say, okay, we understand it's Yahuwah. We understand it's Yahusha. So we're dilly-dallying around the first principles. We need to put them off, make up our mind and come into maturity because you won't have access to the library of his mind. And how beautiful is it? How lovely is it to understand these things coming toward us? Isn't that fantastic? Beautiful. Now, the next one is the eyelids. That was the eyebrows. And look at the teaching that's in eyebrows. And that's only just one of them. Now we come down to eyelids, and that's Tehillim or Psalm 11. Tehillim 11. In Yahuwah I have taken refuge. We all need to do this, to know we're doing it, to realise that we are in it and that he's protecting us. And we need to be hearing his voice and moving with him in the world. Remember, it's not a circus. Man has formed these indoctrinated circuses. It's the same as the Cirque du Soleil. Each Cirque du Soleil has a different thing they're presenting to the world. And they have a whole lot of different artists working together as a team and they're going out into the world and they're performing in different places all around the world, the same as the church fathers do it. It's a Cirque du Soleil. This isn't what the body is. The body has the knowledge and they're all over the world and they're living it and doing it. It's not done in a circus. Everything doesn't evolve around the circus. In Yahuwah, I have taken refuge. Take refuge, brothers and sisters, you will be safe. Why do you say to me, flee to your mountain like a bird? For look, the wrong bend a bow. They set their arrow on the string to shoot it in dark, to shoot in darkness at the upright in heart. So if you're going to take refuge, you're going to get shot at. Yeah? Mm. You've got to learn not to take offence at the arrows. Let them slap the other cheek. Walk the extra mile with them. Go all the way. <clears throat> That's what Lou's doing to his persecutors. Mm. When the foundations are destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Yahuwah in his set-apart heckle, which is? Temple. Temple. The throne of Yahuwah is in the heavens. His eyes see. <clears throat> Here it is. His eyelids examine the sons of men. So his eyelids examine us. Everything we do and say, here's the eyelids, part of the head, part of the body. Yahuwah tries the righteous. He's going to make sure that you pass the test. He's going to put you through the test. He's going to put things before you where you're going to have to work out what he's saying to you and go where he wants you to go. 
But his being shall hate the wrong, and the one who loves violence. Upon the wrong he rains snares, fire and sulphur and a scorching wind. That's a prophecy for the future. Are the portion of their cup. For Yahuwah is righteous and he loved righteousness and has loved righteousness. The upright shall see his face. See what he's saying to us through the eyelids? That's just one scripture. There's stacks of them. The stacks of teaching in the library of his mind. Like that one, Mark? Oh, yeah. The library of his mind. That's a good, that's a song title there. <laughs> oh, mate. It's so amazing, isn't it? This is only just a little bit. Uh, the next one is Eyes and Ears. So that's Romans chapter 11. See how we're going right through the scripture, all different places. <clears throat> but whatever you look up about the body, there's going to be teaching. Mm. And as we look at it as a body and we're looking at the parts of the body, just about every part of the body is mentioned in the scripture. That's how saturated it is. It's saturated. So... How can you say it's a C-H-U-R-C-H? It's not. It's the body, the assembly, and it's not organised by men. Men don't get access to this, what we're talking about. Mm. I don't hear them talking like this. I don't see it happening. I don't hear the messianics saying this. They're not teaching us. We're getting this direct from his, from his library the library of his mind. Mm. And that's the access we need, all of us need, and it's simple and easy. And it can only come through belief. You have to believe what you're reading and understand that he set this here for us. Look at this discovery. Have you heard, heard of this discovery before, Mark? No. So everyone can discover all sorts of things through the scripture, by having the access. That's wonderful, eh? Mm. Amazing. So we're looking at the eyes and the ears now, and that's Romans 11. I say then, has Elohim rejected his people? Now we're looking for eyes and ears as we go through it. Let it not be, for I also am an, I'm an Israelite, of the seed of Abram, of the tribe of Binyamin. Elohim has not rejected his people who he now who he knew beforehand. So he knew us before. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Eli Yahu? How he pleads with Elohim against Israel, saying, Yahuwah, they have killed your prophets and overthrown your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the answer of Elohim say to him? I have left for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to the AAL. So therefore, so we're going right back at, at um, in the time of Eli Yahoo and yet we're still in Romans. So therefore, also at this present time, a remnant according to the choice of favour has come to be. So at this time, there's still a remnant, yeah? Mm. To the choice of favour. To the choice of favour. What's the word instead of favour, Mark? Uh, they say grace, don't they? Yeah, hmm. Lewis's favourite word. Hmm. That's right, right. yeah. <laughs> right? Hmm. So the word is favour. Hmm. If we say G-R-A-C-E there, hmm. we're saying that word there, then we're not really getting what does it mean, you know? When you look at favour, that's for me. That's from Yahuwah to me. That's his, I'm getting his favour. How much better is that? Mm. 
than being given his G-R-A-C-E. <laughs> you know, it's lost to dead word. Mm. And if by favour it is no longer of works, otherwise favour is no longer favour. And if it is of works, it is no longer favour. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the chosen did obtain it, didn't he? And the rest were hardened. Who are the rest? The, uh, the Yahudim, the Jews. That's right. Yeah. So when he came, the ones that didn't receive him were hardened. It's the same as us today, brothers and sisters. When this word comes to you, because it's pure scripture, if you don't receive it, you're going to harden your heart. You might say, I'm mad, but you're going to miss out. Mm. Verse 8. It has been written, Yahuwah has given them a spirit of deep sleep, eyes not to see and ears not to hear, unto this day. So there's the eyes and the ears. This teaching comes with the eyes and ears, and it's only one of the teachings. Dawood also said, let their table become, a, come, become for a snare and for a trap and for a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened not to see and bow down their backs always. I say then, see this part of the body, your back. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Let it not be, but by their fall, deliverance. See, who are we talking about here? Still the same, mm. Jew, Yahudim, has come to, but by their fall, deliverance has come to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Do you get the point? No. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. So, I say, so I say then, verse 11, have they stumbled that they should fall? Let it not be. But by their fall, this is the Yahudim, the Jews, deliverance has come to the Gentiles. So didn't that happen? Weren't the Gentiles delivered because they hardened their hearts? Mm. to provoke to jealousy. So he's provoked the Jews to jealousy by the Gentiles being delivered. So the They're older, jealous, serious. The, okay? bro the older brother's going to be jealous when the younger brother's That's right. Be. I get it. Mm. And if their fall is riches for the world, which it is, and their failure, riches for the Gentiles, how much more their completeness. So it's pretty obvious which direction they're going. Mm. For I speak to you, the Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an em emissary to the Gentiles, I esteem my service. So he's coming to the Gentiles and he's telling them, if somehow I might provoke to jealousy those who are of my flesh and save some of them. So by him coming to the Gentiles, he's hoping that the Jews will get jealous and get saved. Yeah? Mm. That's still going today. Yeah. Verse 15, for if their casting away is the restoration to favour of the world, grace of the world, remember GIC of the world, what is their acceptance but life from the dead? Yeah. Now, if the first fruit is set apart, the lump is also. Who's the lump? Us. No, the Jews. Oh. And if the root is set apart, so are the branches. Mm. So here's the root and the branches. The root set apart, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off and you, being a wild olive tree, have been grafted in among them, and came to share the root and fatness of the olive tree, 
do not boast against the branches because we can't go against the Jews. This is what Lou's saying, the older brother. Don't get, we'll be in trouble. And if you boast, remember, you do not bear the root, but the root bears you. So watch out. We may be favoured, but we've still got to respect. You shall say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Good, but unbelief, by unbelief, they were broken off. See, they were broken off when they didn't believe Yahushua. And you stand by belief. So you're in there because you believed in Yahushua. So you put into the vine. Mm. Do not be arrogant, but fear, respect. For if Elohim did not spare the natural branches, they're the ones, the Jews that were cut off, he might not spare you either, if you boast, see? See then the kindness and sharpness of Elohim. He'll cut on those who feel sharpness, but towards you, kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also shall be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, shall be grafted in. So they change their mind and believe they can come in. For Elohim is able to graft them in again. Is he not? Mm. Who are we to say? What does the circus say about the Jews? Cut off, divorced. And they consider them the chosen and they boast. And that's a very bad place to be in because you can get cut off, can't you? Mm. Verse 24. For if you were cut out, cut out, cutting in and out, <laughs> if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, <clears throat> and were grafted contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? They'll fit in really well, won't they? Mm. But that's got nothing to do with us if Yahushua moves, does it? We accept them. We go there. We're just so blessed to have favour to be grafted in. Yeah? Mm. So we've got to watch ourselves. Brothers and sisters, you messianics out there, using your mouths to say and do what you please, this is telling us how we are to behave. If you're not behaving this way, you're not grafted in. Let's face the facts. We need to get all this together. We need to come together in unity and do the Torah, not what we're doing at the moment. For I do not, with verse 25, I do not wish you to be ignorant of this secret. See, he wants us to know what's going on, brothers, lest you should be wise in your own estimation that hardening in part has come over Israel until the completeness of the Gentiles has come in. So that's what's going on. They're hardened in their heart until all the completeness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it has been written. The deliverer shall come out of Zion and he shall turn away wickedness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. How about that? How amazing is this? Truly, as regards the good news, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the choice, they are beloved for the sake of the, of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of Elohim are not to be repented of. So the gifts that you have, you don't have to repent of them. You go on and you're calling. For as you also at one time disobeyed Elohim, but now have con obtained compassion through their disobedience. So it's only through their disobedience, the older brother, the Jews, that we have compassion. You got that? So we are blessed through them. So also these have now disobeyed that through the compassion shown you, they might obtain compassion. 
the compassion that was given to us, they can see it and they can see that they can repent the same as we can because he always wants his people, doesn't he? Yeah. For Elohim has shut them all up to disobedience <clears throat> in order to have compassion on them. You understand what's going on with the Jews? Mm. He shut them up to disobedience so that he had compassion on them and they can see what we've got and what we're getting from the Father. They're going to be jealous and want what we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, the depth of riches and wisdom and knowledge of Elohim. How unsearchable his judgments and untraceable his ways. You can't trace him, but you can flow with him through your part where you are you can do that, brothers and sisters. But you see what the scripture says about him? His judgments and untraceable his ways. You can't trace him yourself and think that you've got him bogged down because he would just wriggle out and come at you another way. <clears throat> he is so amazing. This word about the body has been right from the beginning. It's been right from there. And he's been giving the scripture all the way through. And look at the, what man has done with the scientific knowledge and everything. He knew all that. He understood all this would happen. But it's useless to him. He wants the hearts of men and women that can see that he has done this and want to live with eternity with him. <clears throat> Satan is using all the things of the world to attract us to it. But no way, no way will we forsake because we've tasted of his love. We've tasted of his presence within us. We know him. We all need to know him this way and to be in love. We need to be in love with his Torah because it works. Everything works. Wherever you are, you can just grab Torah and put it to a circumstance and you'll have the light to show you which way to go, what to say or what to do. Remember, it's all about behaviour and it's all in here. And we're just looking at a few scriptures about the body and the parts of the body. Isn't it fantastic oh. and exciting? Oh. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah or who has become his counsellor? Tell me. <laughs> and how much do we think, Brother Messianics, that we know his mind and we're his counsellors? How arrogant are we to think that we know his unsearchableness? Or who first gave to him and it shall be given back to him? Because of him and through him and to him are all, to whom be esteemed forever. Amen. So that's a wonderful way to finish off the ears and the eyes. They have ears but they don't hear. They have eyes, but they don't see. <clears throat> and I'm hoping you're seeing all this, brothers and sisters, and I'm hoping you're taking it personal, and I'm hoping you're going to have a battle to come through the other end to grasp this word because it's his word that I'm sharing with you. I'm not sharing myself. I'm just sharing what I'm speaking to you through the word. I've got nothing to say to you myself. But I know the state of man without this word, without this light, without access to the library. What are you going through, brother? Oh, I'm just, just looking at the state of yeah, my mind and uh, in personally and in comparison to the body and how I function individually and how I function with the body and... Uh, yeah, there's no point looking at other believers and going, oh, I'm better than you. That's just pathetic. It's, um, it's hanging around the door, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's why that, you know what my favourite scripture is? Yeah. What? Um, Matthew 23.13, is it, or 13.23? What's it say? Uh, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you stand in the door, you shut the door. And you you won't go in and you won't let people go in either. Is that it? That's what they're doing. Mm. 
And that's what the messianics are being used by an unforeseen force and they're not aware of it and they, they're, they're going to be standing at the door. So many of them are just standing at the door. They won't go in. They won't have access to the library. <clears throat> they form doctrines and all sorts of things to stop others from going in. It's free, brothers and sisters. You go in and get access to the library yourself. Go in. Don't let others stop you because it's just a dead, empty place at the door. You've got to go through the door and up the path. Psalm 18.24 And Yahuwah repays me according to my righteousness. Repays and Yahuwah repays me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands before his eyes. Mm. This is the eyesight. So you're going to get repaid according to your righteousness. Righteousness is Torah. And how much you know it and how much you're doing it, Mm. you'll get repaid and according to the cleanness of your hands. <clears throat> All right? Yeah. Before his eyes, no dirty hands. And it just doesn't mean in the flesh dirty hands, does it? No. Nothing on your hands that's not Torah. The next one is the nose. And that's Mishlei, Proverbs 30, verse 32. If you have been foolish in lifting up yourself or if you have plotted evil, put your hand to your mouth for as milk under pressure, this is the one, for as milk under pressure brings forth curds. We know that, don't we? Milk under pressure brings forth curds and as a nose under pressure brings forth blood, so wrath under pressure, brings forth strife. So if you've got anger and you get pressured, you're going to do strife. So you've got to look at what your anger is, where your anger is coming from, because Satan can come to you easily, put pressure on you, and you're going to cause strife rather than doing Torah. And that's what he wants. Eh? Mm. And that's that's about the nose. So you've got to find out where your anger's coming from and deal with it so you're not in a vulnerable state. Because it's true, isn't it? If you're upset and angry, you get pressured, you blow your stack. See, we need to get get mature and understand. His is a simple teaching for us to work out what our anger is. Talk to our partner or friend. Work out what your anger is so that you're not controlled. Mm. Deal with it, brothers and sisters. I hope this is manifesting your anger. I hope this is revealing your anger so that you will do something about it instead of existing and being used under pressure to create trouble for others. You need to deal with that anger and kill it by confessing it and facing it. It needs to be dead in your life so it can't use you. Where's it coming from? Where's the anger coming from? And figure it out and overcome it. That's how we're supposed to work. Mm. The next one is the nostrils. So the nose to the nostrils, yeah? Yep. Look, every part of the body. We're mm. only in the head at the moment. <laughs> We're only doing the head. Yeah. And you've got the insides of the body too. He talks about everything, how he wants the body. There's teaching in every scripture you look up about the body. There's teaching in it for us how he wants us to be. A lot of instruction, yeah? 
Mm. He wants a clean bride. So nostrils is Genesis 2, 7. And Yahuwah Elohim formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils breath of life. And the man became a living being. How amazing is that? <coughs> That's where we get life from. We were breathed. The breath of life came into Adam <coughs> and came into us. It's been passed on to us. Life. They still can't work out how it happened. <laughs> no, they can't. But we know it came from Yahuwah. He formed man out of the dust and then he breathed into his nostrils <coughs> and the man became alive. How miraculous and wonderful. I'm not from a monkey. I don't believe in all that. <coughs> now we're going to look at the mouth. Then the mouth got lips and throat and tongue and teeth. So we're looking at the mouth first. That's Revelation 16. And I heard a loud voice from the dwelling place saying to the seven messengers, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of Elohim on the earth. Wow. <clears throat> and what are we looking for in this, brothers and sisters? Mouth. Mouth. And the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and an evil and wicked saw came upon the men, those having the mark of the beast and those worshipping his image. <coughs> there you are. So there's the mark, Sunday service. And the second messenger poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of the dead one, and every living creature in the sea died. And the third messenger poured out his bowl on the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard, heard the messenger of the water saying, You're, You are righteous, O Yahuwah, the one who is and who was and who shall be, because you have judged these. There has to be judgment for unrighteousness. There has to be. Otherwise, he isn't true. And what do we see happening in the world now? Look what's happening to New South Wales. Look what's happening again in Queensland. Floods, floods, floods. It's judgment. In America, they're getting tornadoes one after the other. It's judgment. It's on the way to getting worse. Yahuwah is in the airwaves. He is showing us our disobedience. He's showing us his wrath and his anger at us. <clears throat> now, we used to have all this sort of stuff when I was a young fella. But now, it's every year things are getting worse and worse. All the things you're hearing about gangs and drugs and, and body parts and slavery, it's getting worse. And a lot of messianics are just fighting. How ridiculous. Verse 6. Because they have shed the blood of the set-apart ones and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they deserve it. Wow. Wow. And I heard another out of the altar saying, Yea, Yahuwah El Shaddai, true and righteous are your judgments. <clears throat> there has to be judgment. And the fourth messenger poured out his bowl on the sun and it was given to him to burn men with fire. And the men were burned with great heat and they blasphemed the name of Elohim, Yahusha who possessed authority over these plagues, and they did not repent to give him esteem. He possesses authority over all these plagues. This is his judgment coming on the earth now, showing us. He possesses 
authority over it. Don't be fooled. Don't think it's just Mother Nature because Mother Nature is satanic. She's a, the whore. And the fifth messenger, verse 10, poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his reign became darkened and they gnawed their tongues from pain and they blasphemed the Elohim of the heaven for their pains and their swords. How about that? Mm. Mentioned tongues there and did not repent of their works. They wouldn't repent of their works. They're not going to repent, brothers and sisters. So you better wake up and repent of yours. Think of yourself. They're not going to repent. Think of yourself. Get yourself right. Get access. Verse 12. And the sixth messenger poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up in order to prepare the way of the sovereigns from the east. And I saw coming out of the what? Mouth. <clears throat> What's the word we're looking at? Mouth. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits as frogs. For they are spirits of demons doing signs which go out to the sovereigns of the entire world to gather them to the battle of the great day of Yahuwah the Almighty. See, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who is staying awake, guarding his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What have you got to be guarding? What have the Nazarim got to guard, Mark? His uh, covenant, his word, and his name. That's right. Torah and name. So that's our garment too, eh? Mm. Guarding the garments of righteousness. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Ha-Megiddo. And the seventh messenger poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the dwelling place of the heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there came to be noises and thunders and lightnings and there came to be a great earthquake, such a, a mighty and great earthquake as had not come to be since men were on the earth. <clears throat> and the great city became divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babel was remembered before Elohim to give her the cup of the wine of her fierceness of his wrath, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and great hail from the heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed Elohim for the plague of the hail, because the plague was exceedingly great. <clears throat> Those that have gone in the door and found access will not have this happen to them. But if you dilly-dally around the door and don't go in, don't get up the path, don't get the access, don't get the knowledge, don't flow with the Father as part of his body and do your job here on earth, you won't, you'll cop all this, you'll be in that. Mm. Don't fool around, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and that was the mouth. Mm. Look what comes out of the mouth, yeah. the demons. Unclean spirits, wow. Okay. So that's just one scripture. There's many on the mouth, as you can imagine. And so you can learn so much about the mouth. Now, I'm sure that you can bring scriptures to your own mind about mouth now. But this one is for tonight's teaching. So that's what we're in for. This is what is coming. He said this is going to happen. And have a look at the signs in the earth. Days will be like the days of Noah at the end. You know, what's going on now in the world that was like that then? Figure it out. Mm -hmm. Next one we're going to do three and one. Lips, 
throat and tongue. This is number 10. Romans chapter 3. Okay, let's go. It's a whole chapter again. What then is the advantage of the Yehudite? Or what is the value of the circumcision? Who are the Yehudite? Mark. The, uh, the older brother. That's right. So what then is the advantage of the older brother? Or what is the value of the circumcision? It's like an earthly Much sign. in every way, eh? Just, just like an earthly sign. Yeah. Much in every way because firstly indeed that they were entrusted with the words of Elohim. Who was entrusted with the words of Elohim? Yahudim. Did you know this like this? They were entrusted with it. And look what they've done. Look what they did. That's why they were scattered, because they got into idolatry. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief nullify the trustworthiness of Elohim? Let it not be. But let Elohim be true, and every man a liar. So whereas every circumstance, every situation, if the word is the opposite to what man is saying, let man be the liar. Mm -hmm. That you should be declared right in your words and prevail in your judging. But if our unrighteousness establishes the righteousness of Elohim, what shall we say? Is Elohim unrighteous who is inflicting wrath? I speak as a man. Let it not be. Otherwise, how shall Elohim judge the world? For if the truth of Elohim has increased through my lie to his esteem, why am I also still judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil so that good might come? As we are wrongly accused and as some claim that we say, their judgment is in the right. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously accused both Yahudim and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it has been written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Brothers and sisters, where do you stand in that? When you come in the door, you have to get your gown. Your wedding gown has to be cleansed, no wrinkle or spot. And that's a process. Not one of us are righteous. No, are righteous. There is no one who is understanding. There is none who is seeking Elohim. That's what it's like today on the earth. It's pretty dry. They all have turned aside. They have together become worthless. There is none who does good. No, not one. How many people talk to you like this? Their throat, here's the throat, tongue and lips. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have deceived. The poison of adders is under their lips. What a vile state to be in. That is the state of the human race before their creator. Those that are not immersed into his name and have repented. Everyone that comes into your presence is in that state that is not born into Israel whose mouth is filled with cursing and bitterness. You will find that. Their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and wretchedness are in their ways. <clears throat> and the way of peace they have not known. We don't judge them, of course. This is just the reality that we live every day. There is no fear of Elohim before their eyes. And we know that whatever the Torah says, it says to those who are in the Torah, 
so that every mouth might be stopped and all the world come under judgment before Elohim. Has to be judgment. Therefore, by works of Torah, no flesh shall be declared right before him. For by the Torah is the knowledge of sin. If the Torah wasn't there, we wouldn't even know we're in sin. But now, apart from the Torah, a righteousness of Elohim has been revealed, being witnessed by the Torah and the prophets. And the righteousness of Elohim is through belief. The righteousness of Elohim is through belief in Yahushua Messiah to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference between Jew, Greek, whatever. <clears throat> Their righteousness and the righteousness of Elohim is through belief in Yahushua Messiah. How about that? Mm. Garments of righteousness. That's where you get your garments through your righteousness. Belief. <laughs> For all have sinned and fall short of the esteem of Elohim, being declared right without pain by his favour through the redemption which is in Messiah Yahusha, whom Elohim set forth as an atonement, here's that atonement again, through belief in his blood. <coughs> Here it comes. See the understanding to demonstrate his righteousness because in his tolerance Elohim has passed over the sins that have taken place before. <coughs> so it's all gone to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he is righteous and declares righteous the one who has belief in Yahusha. What a wonderful place that we've come into. What wonderful knowledge coming to us, brothers and sisters. We can have this in our heart and know our status. They're all talking about status, the status they have. Verse 27, when there is the boasting, it is shut out. By what? Torah of works? No, but by the Torah of belief. For we reckon that a man is declared right by belief without works of Torah. So none of those standing in the right, in the doorway trying to stop them with their belief systems are going to work. They can go straight in through their belief and up the path and past those in the doorway. They're always lurking around there. Or is he the Elohim of the Yehudim only and not also the Gentiles? Yea, of the Gentiles also, since it is one Elohim who declares, who shall declare right the circumcised by belief and the uncircumcised through belief. Do we then nullify the Torah through the belief? Let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. Mm. So that is the lips, the throat and the tongue. How do you feel about that teaching, Mark? Oh, that's a uh, full on, isn't it? You've got to watch yourself. You can't just, yeah. you can't just make light what comes out of your mouth, what comes no through way. your behaviour. Yeah. Every everything's got a consequence. Yep. And uh, it may not. We be have to keep that. Go on. Yeah, it may not be at the end when you're judged, although it will be. It, it might be next week. <laughs> Something might happen. <laughs> yeah. You know? so. We have to give account for every word. Mm. <clears throat> now we're going to do the teeth. And that's Luke 13, 22 to 30. And he was going through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. What are we looking for here? Teeth. Teeth. And someone said to him, Master, <clears throat> are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, because many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. What do you need to be have access? 
the correct name, Yahushua Messiah, the right immersion in that name, believing in that name, accepting that name, that's the name. Then you enter into Israel, you graft it in, and you have access to the library. Verse 25, strive to enter through that narrow gate, brothers and sisters, it's narrow. When once the master of the house, verse 25, has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Master, Master, open for us, and he shall answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. So there's going to be a come a time when there's a door shut and obviously the full judgment hasn't come yet. But the door is shut. He's got the right amount of Gentiles in and the, and the rest of the um, Jews are in as well. The older brothers come in. <clears throat> so once the Jew, Gentiles come in, the older brothers coming in and right, the door is shut. So we need to be in the door. Don't hang around the door. Door stuff. No good. You've got to go in through the narrow gate and up the path. Verse 26. Then you shall begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he shall say to you, I do not know you. Where, I, where you are from? Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. You can't muck around. You have to have the right, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> Qualification. All the qualifications of the world and the Christian world and you, you're not accepted unless you have the right qualifications. Forget about it. That's not the mindset he wants. This is the mindset he wants. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's the teeth. When you see Abraham and Yitzhak, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the reign of Elohim and yourselves thrown outside. So you're going to see the difference. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and sit down in the reign of Elohim. And see, there are last who shall be first and there are first who shall be last. That's where we're finishing on that one tonight. Mm. <clears throat> Good stuff, eh? Oh, that's just the head. Yeah, well, that's only just a few scriptures from the head. Mm. I mean, there's so many. You can do 50 studies on just those alone again. It's a lot there to receive, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Got to have access yeah, well, to the library. Oh, I like you like that. that? Oh, that's fresh, mate. <laughs> isn't that good? Access to the library of his mind. <laughs> so we're only up to the teeth, mate. And we're talking about the body. Mm. And what do you think about the, the, the state that the messianic realm's in? <clears throat> oh, blind, like you said, eyes but can't see and ears but can't hear. I didn't say that. No. Yeah. <laughs> the Torah says it, doesn't it? Mm. It's great. Just to, that's really inspired. Just to, just go parts of the parts of the body and all the teaching that surrounds it. It's amazing. Mm. It's right through the whole scripture. Mm. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah. It's not hard. No. Just get your concordance out yeah. and pick a scripture. Yeah. With the teeth or the nose or the, you know, the hair in the nose or the beard or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we haven't done the head yet. Yeah. What do you reckon about that? Oh. How much is there? Yeah. 
I'm sure many would say this approach is just insane, but look what Yahushua is giving us. His way is better than ours. Who do you think would say it's insane? <laughs> I don't know. Just people who have set structure of, of, of I don't know who. Just I just study. Think, yeah. <clears throat> just, just the. I think because people want to come up with their meat themselves, they don't want to rely on Yahushua. Have they found Yahushua. this out? No. No. Have we? Yeah. And who are we to them with their credentials? Yeah, nothing. <clears throat> nothing. So what are they going to see by this brazen person? <laughs> They're going to see that they ain't got it. Or they'll make excuses. How are they going to feel? Lacking. Jealous. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's the process, see? Yeah. Isn't it cool? Hmm. And we, you and I, have this, mate. Mm. How great, how exciting is it? Yeah. And there's numerous studies you can do. Yeah. And I'm not claiming anything. No. I'm just saying it's the Torah. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. like, can they deny it? No. Did they get it? No. See? Mm. That's what he's doing. Mm. You know this. You can really enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, You're part of it. Yeah. You know how many hits we had on the other one yet? Uh, I think we're probably approaching 200 by now, which is pretty good. It's under a week. Yeah. Mm. That's a week. Yeah. Uh, no, it's only been up since Sabbath, so it's half a week. Wow. <laughs> okay. What did... Um, What's Lou's up to the uh, autobiography? Yeah, it's it's gone. It's approaching six hundred, I think. Hey, yeah, what about right. that? Mm. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, mate. And that's been a fortnight. So that's pretty good. Whoa. Yeah. That's gonna go and blow, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And, and anyone commenting to Lou about it, or to you? No, not that I know. There was only that comment a week or so ago to Phyllis. Yeah. And they were encouraged and they, they're they giving them full support. So. Isn't that good? Yeah. So, Wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it can get very discouraging when, because all these things on the YouTube channel and they're striking this and blocking that and all these sort of things and. You, you look at all the man hours you put into it and you get you can get really discouraged but I've just held on to what you said one day and I, I think about that, that old Terminator Salvation was on TV the other night where there's just a whole the whole uh, earth just been burnt up and they're all huddled, yeah. huddled around this little radio and John Connor's yeah. there like you are the resistance you know you you yeah. know you are not alone you know and I'm thinking one day they're Spiritually, everybody is just going to be starving, and what we're doing now, just preparing. Mm. People might be huddled around a little crappy TV watching some something we've done, or you know, if the internet's still running, that you know, who knows? So that's what I look at. I don't look at the result now because you know, no. 150 hits, oh, big whoop! People are mm. looking at dancing cats, and they got 60 million. You know, yeah, it's, it's like. Well, that's what you're competing with. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, it's in the airwaves. Mm. But Yahushua has his way. Remember he had all those people stashed there? Mm. And remember the time of the door. So we're working towards the door shutting. Mm. You know, there's a right amount, there's a remnant. He always has a remnant. Mm. There's a right amount of people that are going to come in the door is shut. Yeah. And that's where we are. Mm. You know, we're working for that. Mm. <clears throat> we're so blessed to be chosen to be part of this, you know. Yeah. So we just keep going, you know. Endure mm. to the end. 
stand. Or what is it? Say endure or um, just stand. <laughs> yeah, stand. Just go on in your everyday life. There's another thing now. Um, endure, persevere. Oh, what's the word? Do something. Just be productive. That's what it means. The word, but I can't think of what. Tarry. Um, uh, so, so it comes. Occupy. Yeah. That's right, occupy. <laughs> yeah. Occupy till it comes, just occupy. Yeah. No? I don't think you're going to give up, do you? No. You know, the pressure comes. Mm. If you're angry, strive. Mm. Yeah. As milk under pressure brings forth curds <laughs> and the nose under pressure brings forth blood. <laughs> Wrath under anger brings strife. <laughs> Ooh, deal with your anger, pets. Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Wow. Hey? Mm. Yeah. So, you know, we can just sit in our homes and do this and be free, mm. and uh, it's effective. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, do you think it's heavy stuff? No. No. But I, Do you I've, think I've, I've had to face when I've talked to certain people that I've been through a certain process um, in myself, um, things I might think or look or feel or taste or touch or all the things that go on in my body. I've been through a process. And, you know, you stumble sometimes, but I've been through a process with Yahusha and my family and my wife and, and you guys when we had a, an assembly. And... I faced a lot of people who haven't been through that. Um, <clears throat> so, but they got, Yahushua's got his own little training package for everybody. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And I've, I've been thinking the last couple of weeks, ever since the biography, really. I don't know if I told you, I was thinking um, when I was listening to Lou talk about his love for Chris Coster and how he was a mentor and he was. <clears throat> Older and he was just, you know, cut really bad when he died. I've been thinking, because yeah. I'm young and busy and, you know, you don't think about the future. But I think, well, yeah. what if you just carked it? Victoria carks it, Lou and Phyllis, you know, they're gone, they're dead. You know, Yahushua Tarry is another 20, 30, 40 years. Well, you guys are dead. So, yeah. maybe. But I'm saying, so we got to... You have to keep going. Yeah, we got to, we're going to be the ones... You know, uh, people, the younger people, that we're going to be the old ones with the beards and young people are going to be asking us all the questions and we're like, oh, my goodness, that's overwhelming because yeah. I just sit in most of these shows and go, oh, yeah, great, yeah, great. So one day I'm going to have to cough up with the goodies, <laughs> you know. So, which if you put in that position, I guess you can do. You just listen and say, but... Um, I haven't really wanted to go there because I don't feel confident. I, I don't want to, you know, let the old people do it. They've got the wisdom. How hard is this, though? Not hard. Hmm? Not hard. You can do this on any subject. Hmm. Yeah. And there's going to be varying, varying teachings about it all. Hmm. But it'll all blend in. Didn't that blend in tonight? Yeah. Yeah. It's about hearing his voice, eh? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Amazing. And he's setting up his body now in the earth. Those that say yes, he's doing it. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. Because we're he, here. He's definitely doing it. Well, brothers and sisters, we really want to express Yahushua's love to you tonight. We hope that you take this message in love and see where you're at and see if you need to do something about yourself. There's enough information there, I'm sure, to spurt you on up the path. Don't dilly-dally. I mean, we have to come into this. And all through the scripture, I think we're proving that you can see he's mentioning parts of the body. And, of course, he wants the whole body to come together, doesn't he? Mm. And we all have to come into this agreement and believe 
what the Torah is saying to us. He loves us so dearly, but he can't express his love to us if we're rejecting. We need to accept him wholeheartedly, to accept his Torah wholeheartedly, no reserves. I mean, if you're going to love someone, don't you go wholeheartedly? Go the whole hog, make a fool of yourself. So what? You get If you fall down, you get up and go on. The love is the most important thing. We have to learn about ourselves. It says that we're going to get cleansed. Look what the lepers have to go through to get clean. Yeah. That's us coming in. It's the body. He's calling the body in and he's going to bring everybody and graft them all together. He's going to do it. All these things are going to happen and it looks like it's pretty soon. So, brothers and sisters, we really want to urge you to come into the wonderful love, the security, the refuge of our wonderful Creator and Father who loves us so much and he loves you and you need to get rid of that hard heart and the bitterness. The only thing that will wash that away is believing in his blood and coming into this knowledge. Seek through the scripture. Have a look. Do a personal study by yourself on the body. There's numerous studies you can do. Look up numerous scriptures for every part of the body and put them all together and do your own study. These are just a few that I've pulled out of the scripture. And it goes from, from the old to the new. It's all one. Okay, brothers and sisters, that's it for tonight. We've had a wonderful time in the Word. We hope you have too, and Yahushua loves you. All the best. So be it. So be it.